what does authority do in order for us to understand that first let us understand where authority is mentioned regarding jesus christ there is a big difference between power and authority power doesn't heal the sick power needs permission to heal the sick that permission is given by the authority paul says i have the right to do everything but i don't why because not everything is beneficial to me many of us as christians we think that because just because we are under the law of grace everything works for us i'm telling you just because you are under the law of grace not everything works for you jesus christ had a person that he was accountable to and he was accountable for every action towards that man people might ask you brother sister how do you say that when you submit to jesus christ everything works out you really cannot explain it to them without making them understand how authority works yesterday was a fantastic day uh, preached to several people in the city of kamam and traveled back and i'm glad i'm here joining back with you hallelujah so continuing with what uh, we have started last week uh, on the topic of authority uh, how does the role of authority play in our lives and what role does it play in our lives how important is authority in our lives do does being under authority mean that you are actually submitting and being a slave or does being under authority mean something else is what we have learned last week and uh, this week i'm going to continue on the same topic and if you have missed last week i'm telling you you have missed something very very important so please do go back to our uh, social media channels on youtube and uh, facebook or insta and please refer to our uh, last week message you know the best part about yesterday is i thought i was going to be more sick uh, after traveling because the other day i was having a temperature of around 100 101 but uh, by the grace of god maybe because of the sweat that that i was in last night you know while i was preaching it was all sweaty it was, i thought it was an indoor uh, auditorium like ours but uh, it it is an indoor auditorium but it is a non non air conditioned auditorium but uh, man i'm telling you the sweat i think it washed away everything hallelujah so today we are going to talk on the topic called authority everybody say authority and continuing on authority we are going to see with the on the angle what does authority do what does authority do and in order for us to understand that first let us understand where authority is mentioned regarding jesus christ and we can find that in matthew chapter 9 verse 6 matthew chapter 9 verse 6 and it says like this but i want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins so he said to the paralyzed man get up take your mat and go home then the man got up and went home when the crowd saw this they were filled with awe and they praised god who had given such authority to man now i want you to understand that we see a scenario where jesus christ was commanding the spirit of evil or the evil spirit to leave the body of a man who was paralyzed and immediately what happened the evil spirit left the body which was paralyzed my dear brothers and sisters you need to understand this it is the authority which casts out the demons but it is not your yelling and your screaming you need to understand that most of us the scenarios that we have seen in our past life in our life in the past was whenever there is a demon possessed guy or a demon possessed lady a man used to scream loud but jesus over here he doesn't scream he doesn't shout he simply orders the evil spirit to leave and the evil spirit leaves people who understood say amen so it is not you need to understand that it is not power but it is authority there is a big difference between power and authority power doesn't heal the sick power needs permission to heal the sick so that permission is given by the authority amen 
So power without authority is energy without permission. That's the best I can put right, right now. Power without authority is energy without permission. If you want to do something, then you definitely need a legal approval or a legal authority that is going to be appro approving your action. So power without authority is illegal. So many of us, we have energy to do different things. We have power to do different things. Yet, the reason why we do not do it is because we are not authorized. That is exactly what Paul says. I have the right to do everything. But I don't. Why? Because not everything is beneficial to me. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, now we need power, but what about authority? Most of us, we always tend to have power. We always want to build our muscles. We want to grow nice and strong. But if you look at a traffic constable on the road, he doesn't have a six pack. You know, he doesn't have a muscle on his, on his flesh. Yet, when he says stop, you better stop. Why? Because that is exactly what is called as authority. Now, authority doesn't really care how you are, what you are. Authority, all it cares is about whether you are authorized or not. Now, this is, a, this is the word exactly what we see about Jesus Christ. He has the authority to lay down his life and to pick it back again. My dear brothers and sisters, if the Son of Man has it, you also have it. Amen. You need to understand, when you are under authority, you have a confidence which you cannot create. You cannot create that confidence. If you look at that, if you look at the Prime Minister of India, the kind of authority he walks in, you cannot recreate it. You cannot create it in any fake way. No, you can't. Why? Because that is the kind of authority that the Constitution gives that position of the Prime Minister. Are you understanding, church? So, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus laid down his life under instructions. You need to understand this. He did not simply lay down just because he felt so. No. Yeah. And we also find another scenario where Jesus was talking about authority and he gave authority to his disciples. And from that time onwards, the disciples started going into the world. We find that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him, gave them, what did he give them? Authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Now you got to understand this. One day, Jesus, he, he held an assembly and he said, come over here and today I'm going to authorize you so that you can drive out the impure spirits from today onwards. You can start healing the sick. That means sickness or that impure spirit needs authority to be driven away from you. You know the same scenario where another time the disciples were there and Jesus Christ was on that mountain and he was coming down the mountain. And what happened exactly was Matthew, he, he, he thought, okay, let me, let me become the hero today. And he thought, I'm going to drive out this impure spirit from this boy. Why? Because a father brought down this, uh, this boy uh, and he said, this guy has some demons inside him. And so you know what? Just drive out the demons from him. So Matthew thought, okay, fine. Now this is my time. And he started yelling. He started shouting all day long. He, th he thought he would also drive away the impure spirit, just like how Jesus did. But no, he was not able to. Another time, I mean, the same time, Matthew came. After Matthew, John came. John thought, Matthew, he's not so holy. So I am much more holier and closer to Jesus Christ. So let me start yelling all that screaming and all that shouting. And he, he started, you know, maybe he started speaking in tongues. And yet the demons didn't move away from that body. Why? Why? Because they still were not authorized to cast out the demons from the body of that man. 
my dear brothers and sisters, so when you find out the scenario when Jesus Christ came down, the word which Jesus said was, the father was complaining to Jesus Christ. He was saying, Jesus, I took my son to your disciples to cast out the demon. But they were not able to. And the reply which Jesus Christ gave to disciples was amazing. Jesus said, how long should I be with you? Jesus did not ask, why were you not able to? But Jesus asked, how long, man? That means I have authorized you, I have shown you, yet you are not able to. Why? Because even though you are under authority, if you do not submit to certain laws, it, do it doesn't work. That's what you need to understand. Many of us as Christians, we think that because, just because we are under the law of grace, everything works for us. I'm telling you, just because you are under the law of grace, not everything works for you. You need to understand that there are certain things that you need to follow. For example, yesterday, uh, one of the person who came along with me, he was watching me dress and he was saying, Anna, you lost a lot of weight. I said, how did you know? He said, because I can look at your clothes. Everything is loose right now. How much did you lose? I said, maybe in the past one and a half year, I lost around 14 kgs. He was like, wow. Then I said, yeah. But yet, you're more energetic even though you're sick than me. Then I said, yeah, yes. Because I started understanding how food works in our body, for our body. Many of us think we get energy from our food. No, we don't. A bird gets its energy from flying. A fish gets its energy from swimming. You get your energy from working. People who understand say amen. Now that's called the law of life. For that you gotta understand the law of food. You don't require a lot of food. Man, some people, they eat six times, eight times a day. Yet they're so lazy. I'm telling you, you, start understanding how food works. Because food is there only to nourish you, only to energize you. But if the same food that you're eating, if it makes you more lazy, you're in the wrong program. You know, wisdom, how wisdom works is, wisdom makes you understand how authority works over you. Knowledge makes you understand how authority works under you. Now, you got to understand this. The disciples were submitted under authority in that scenario in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. What about you? Are you submitted under any physical authority? You know, it is easy for you to say, Pastor, I am always under the authority of God. Yes, it is so easy for any person to say that you are under the authority of God. Why? Because God really doesn't talk to you. God really doesn't instruct you. So it is really easy for us to say, I'm under the authority of God. But what about physical authority? Even Jesus Christ was under physical authority. I'm going to show you that in the next coming week. Jesus Christ had a person that he was accountable to. And he was accountable for every action towards that man. Who was it? Who? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was accountable to one person. And I'm going to show that to you in the next week. You got to understand that your mentor is an authoritative figure. Your pastor is an authoritative figure. Your trainer is an authoritative figure. And are you submitting under them? Are you submitting under those authorities? Jesus was also under the authority and Jesus was authorized to give authority. That is the reason why he gave authority unto his disciples. My dear brothers and sisters, once you understand this concept of authority, I'm telling you, you're going to be freed from every bondage that you have in your mind. You're going to be, every, every, every stronghold is going to be removed from your body because you got to understand how authority works. When Jesus stopped the storm, it was not the power that he had, but it was the authority that he had inside him. The authority that was put upon him was what made the storm stop when Jesus said, stop. Many of us in our lives, there are many storms. 
yet we are not able to stop any of that storm. The reason why we are not able to stop any of that storm is because we are not able to understand the concept of authority. We got to understand that you cannot go against authority because that is a system that God has designed. But when you go under authority, you become very powerful. When you submit to authority, you become authorized. My dear brothers and sisters, now understand this very statement that I will show you right now. John chapter 10 verse 17. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay, lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Now where did Jesus receive his commandments? Where did Jesus receive his instructions? You got to understand that he did not lay down his life just because he felt like doing so, but because he received the instructions, the commandments from his authority. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus had the authority, but he received the authority from his father. Even though Jesus had every kind of authority, he, was, he did not take that authority, but he was given that authority. You know, authority is always nominated. You got to understand that. Authority is always nominated. When you are under authority, your boldness explodes. If you understand authority, you will understand how to make an impact in your life. You might be great, but you are nothing without authority. You know, last night when I was standing over there, every, every inch of my body was drenched in sweat. Yet, I did not go there in my name, but I went there in the name of our Father. And that is the reason why when I spoke, the Spirit spoke. When I spoke, people were healed. When I spoke, people were coming out of their bondages. When I spoke, people were being relieved out of their shackles. It is not my power, but it is the authority under which I am submitted to. My dear brothers and sisters, you got to understand in John chapter 7, 17 verse 2, he says, for you granted him authority over people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, people might ask you, Pass, uh, brother, sister, how do you say that Jesus, when, you, when you submit to Jesus Christ, everything works out? You really cannot explain it to them without making them understand how authority works. In democracy, authority is cooperating until I like you. But in a kingdom, it is submitting to the authority no matter what. That is called as submission, obedience. But what do we do? Ah, I'm gonna to listen to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna to agree to whatever you say until I like you. The moment I don't like you, I don't care really who you are. But that, that's, that's the democracy. I'm telling you, democracy messes up, my, messes up our mind. But in a kingdom, that's not how obedience works. That's not how submission works. Submission works no matter what. No matter whether you like it or don't like it. Whether that you think that they're eating you up or not, you just submit under the authority. You know, yesterday when I woke up and when I wanted to travel to Kamam, I didn't really feel like traveling to Kamam. Why? Because I was weak, all weak, all gone, no energy. But you know what? I decided in my mind that I'm going to submit to this name Jesus Christ and whatever word I have committed, I am definitely going to do no matter what kind of health I have, no matter what kind of wealth I have, no, no matter what, if ministry is there, I'm going to give it the first priority. And with that only reason, even though I was not feeling well, I yet traveled all the way to Kamam and came back. My dear brothers and sisters, you got to understand that is what obedience means in the kingdom of God. That is how authority works in the kingdom of God. 
Christ was able to give eternal life because he was authorized by his father. He needed authority to even save you. You better understand that. Jesus Christ needed some authorization even just to save you. Just to save you. What about you? Ah, oh, pastor, I feel like eating a chicken biryani today. Let me eat so. I feel like having that. Let me do so. I feel like sleeping with that girl. Let me sleep so. I feel like doing that. Let me do so. Hello? Your opinion doesn't matter in the kingdom of God. Your opinion doesn't matter in the kingdom of God. You better understand this concept of authority. God, even Jesus Christ needed authority to save you. Jesus Christ did not save you because he felt like saving you. Oh, this girl is so pretty. Let me save her. No. Oh, this boy, he's so hardworking. Let me save him. No. Jesus Christ was authorized to save you. That is the reason why he saved you. He was authorized to lay down his life. That's the reason why he laid down his life. He was authorized to take it back again. That is the reason why he took it back again. He saves you because he's officially authorized. That is the reason why his name is called Yeshua, the Savior. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, authority came from the Latin word octa, means promoter. Promoter. So authority promotes you. I'm, I'm, this is a whole dimension, different dimension of what we thought about authority. We always thought that authority was there to suppress you. No, authority means your promoter. Authority is there so that you can be promoted. My dear brothers and sisters, today I'm asking you, are you submitted under the authority of God? Meaning, authority releases you into your function. Authority doesn't oppress you, but authority gives you your functionality. Authority releases you into your work to function just as I have told you. I do not get my energy from the food, but I get my energy from the functions that I function, from the work that I do. My dear brothers and sisters, authority means one that originates or creates the source. That's who authority is. The one where it originates from. And where it all originates, it all originates from a father, the Lord, the Lord of this world. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, the person who created the car also created what it can do. The person who created your phone also created what your phone can do, what your phone can function. In the same way, the one who created you has created every functionality of yours. Uh, shall we clap our hands and thank God for every function that you have in Jesus' name. My dear brothers and sisters, this message is now authorized by me. It means this information which is in me is being given to you because it has my authorization now. Now you can start talking about this with other people. Every concept which goes from my ministry is mine and I have authorized it. My dear brothers and sisters, because I am the originator, I can promote them with confidence. My dear brothers and sisters, are you the originator of the functioning that you have in your life? Are you the originator of the work that you have in your life? God knows every insect, every plant, and every creature on earth because he designed it and he created it. Now you got to understand this. God knows you so well. God knows uh, every weakness that you have, every strength that you have. Your weakness was not really designed so you can, be, you can be weakened. No. Every gift, every gift has its own flavor. Every gift has its own flavor. You got to understand this. David has his own unique personality. Solomon had his own unique personality. Even though Solomon was the predecessor of, David was the predecessor of Solomon. Solomon was no way in comparison of David. They were two 
totally different entities totally two, two different persons why because they understood the functionality of them when they were submitted under the law of authority some of us today it is really hard for us to submit ourselves to authority you better understand this concept of authority when you understand this concept of authority you will understand that authority is existing only to promote you not to oppress you authority is there only to protect you not to harm you authority is there only to build you up not to harness you down my dear brothers and sisters i'm telling you church when you submit under the authority of jesus christ everything that you have will make sense every weakness that you have you think will make sense every strength that you have every talent every gift that you have will start making sense why because your creator has designed you you know if a car runs and a car releases a smoke from its exhaust a person who doesn't understand the functionality of the ice engine the combustion engine he's going to worry about the smoke that is going to be released from the exhaust but if the same person who understands the the authority how how the car works how the car functions he's never really going to worry about the smoke that the car releases when you understand god when you understand how authority works in the kingdom of god you're going to be a man who's going to be free you know i have decided i'm not going to perform for an audience of many but my audience is only one and i'm going to perform only for him not for anybody else this is when i made up my i made up my mind about this statement when i was 13 14 years that's when i started care, stopped caring about other people's opinion about me you know when you submit under authority when you understand how authority works you really stop taking in the opinions of other people you really stop evading or you really stop ignoring the opinions which is going to mess you up more now this is exactly the problem of of this generation we are starting to take care of every opinion we always bother what does this brother think what does this sister think what does this guy think what does this fellow think aren't you tired aren't you tired of living that kind of life it is time for you to make a change about that start performing for that one person start living for that one person who has authorized you who is going to authorize you and who's going to make you function really well into every functionality of your life let's all stand on to our feet as we close this sermon today remember the car manufacturer creates the manual and your father has created your manual better start reading that this is your manual if you have lost the traction of your life i recommend you to start reading proverbs proverbs the book of proverbs from the bible a lot of good good words start speaking into your life from the book of proverbs you're going to start gaining the traction of your life when you start reading the manual remember my dear brothers and sisters we always say that oh god is love brother yes god is love true but we always use that word use that statement to accommodate a lot of evil things it's okay it's okay let them do that it's okay do you know in the bible david mentioned 
seven things which God hates. God doesn't like these seven things. Solomon mentioned that God hates 14 things in the Bible. God hates 14 things. Even though we use the word God loves, you also need to understand that God hates certain things. God really doesn't like doing certain things. This concept of being free, being independent, is not from the kingdom of God. It is from the kingdom of the devil. Why? Because a fish is never really free if it is out of water. A bird is never free if it is out of the atmosphere. Your freedom, even for you to define your freedom, you need an authority. You need a person who can define it. Remember, being under authority is the most powerful position on earth. Being under authority is the most protected position on earth because the authority protects you and the authority promotes you. Let's all close our eyes and pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. But above all, oh Father, we thank you for the laws that you've given to us. We thank you for your commandments that you've given to us. We thank you for making us understand that authority is there to promote us. Authority is there so that it can make us function in the ways which we were supposed to function. Almighty Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. But above all, oh Father, we want to thank you for the love and the ideas that you have towards us. Oh Lord, we thank you for showering us, O oh Lord, with your authority and with your power, O oh Father. O oh Lord, and I speak to every darkness that exists in this room, O oh Father, to run away right now because they are no longer authorized to stay in these bodies in Jesus' name. They are no longer authorized to dwell in that house of God because that body is the house of God. That dwelling place is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And no thought and no spirit is supposed to dwell other than the Spirit of God. Oh Lord, we thank you for redeeming us today. We thank you for healing us today. Oh Lord, we thank you for continuing us to grow in your attitude, in your knowledge, O oh Father. O oh, Abba God, we thank you for your love that you have shown us today. We thank you for the beautiful things that we are able to do and make this earth a better place by running your kingdom on earth, O oh Father. O oh Lord, let, let your kingdom exist in every thought of ours, in every action of ours, O oh Father. Lord, as we go back home, be with us. Guide us, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, let your, let your blessing be there whenever we walk out and we walk back in, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen.